Okay, in this video, we're going to continue with some examples um, on how to differentiate implicitly. So I'm going to take the derivative of this equation, which means I can take the derivative of each term on both sides of the equation. It does tell me to find dy dx, so I am gonna go ahead and use that notation. So whenever I take the derivative of y, I'm going to get dy dx. Now, um, remember what we mentioned in the first video. In Time you have a product or a quotient with x's and y's in it you do need to use that product or quotient rule so here I do have a product I can look at it as if 3x is one function and y is a second function okay so when I do the product rule for this particular term I'm going to get the first um, function times the derivative of the second function the derivative of y is dy dx plus the second function times the derivative of the first function, which is three. That's just the first term. Plus, now I'm going to take the derivative of this second term. So I'm going to pretend that this is one function and this is the second function. So when I do my product rule, I get the first function times the derivative of the second function. So two y to the first times dy dx because my, my base is not an x, so I do have to multiply by the derivative of that base. And that base, the derivative of y is dy dx, plus the second term times the derivative of the first term. So two is my constant multiplier, and then two x to the one. Then equals, and the derivative of a negative six constant is just zero. So this one I definitely need to clean up here. So I get 3x dy dx plus 3y. And if I distribute a plus, it's not really going to change anything in my terms here. So I get a 4x squared y dy dx plus a 4xy squared equal to zero. Now when you're writing your um, variables, Formally, they go in alphabetical order. So that's why here I put the x in front of the y squared. Now I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to move all the terms that do not have a dy dx to the right-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to minus 3y on both sides of the equation, and I'm going to minus 4xy squared on both sides of the equation. So that I end up with 3x dy dx plus 4x squared y dy dx equal to negative 3y and negative 4xy squared. Now I'm going to factor out the dy dx from the left hand side. So I end up with 3x plus 4x squared y and I, in the right hand side, I am not doing anything to it, so it stays exactly the same. Then I would divide both sides by 3x plus 4x squared y to isolate the dy dx on the left -hand side. So that would cancel this, and my answer would be dy dx equal to negative 3y minus 4xy squared over 3x plus 4x squared y. Now another way you might see this problem is um, is written like this. They may factor the negative from the numerator and put it in the front and then have a positive 3y and a positive 4xy squared in the numerator. Another way they might write it is that these two terms in the numerator may be reversed and these two terms in the denominator may be reversed. But you will need to be able to tell um, your equivalent fractions. So you, if you look at the answers and you look at your work, they may look a little bit different, um, but they may still be equivalent. Okay, let's move on to example three. So it says find dy dx and it wants me to do this problem. Well, for the first term, I have a function here of x and a function here of y. So I do need to do the product rule. 
So when I do the product rule, I get the first times the derivative of the second. My exponent is not an x, so I multiply it by the derivative of y, plus the second function times the derivative of the first function, which is just a 1, minus my 13 multiplier, and the derivative of x is 1, plus my 2 multiplier, and the derivative of y is dy dx, and the derivative of x on the right hand side is just 1. So let me clean this up a little bit. Not much can be done to clean it up, but we'll see what we get here. And just like before, we're going to move all the terms that have that do not have a dy dx to the right hand side. So I'm going to minus e to the y and I'm going to add 13. Add 13 minus e to the y. I get x e to the y dy dx plus 2 dy dx equal to 14 minus e to the y. These are like terms, they're both constants, so I can combine them. Now I'm going to factor out the dy dx on the left hand side. And then finally divide by that factor to isolate the dy dx. And that is the derivative of our original function.